Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is a Dell Optiplex GX1. Now, this one has a tag on it. It says computer from computer reset, does not power up, sound card built in, last analysis 12-8-2021. So this is a computer reset machine. That one came from the free pile at VCF Midwest 2023. Um, I don't know much about it yet. Uh, a friend of mine got this for himself and left it over here because it doesn't work. So we need to take it apart and find out what's going on. Um, now, I remember these machines. These, were, these machines were literally everywhere back in the early 2000s. Um, matter of fact... My high school was full of these machines and the taller ones. Uh, the writing lab, which was which at the time were all NT4 workstations, were running the taller ones of these. And the teachers, I, re I specifically remember the teachers, including my biology teacher at the time, Mrs. Nuttall, had this exact machine. And I remember when I was working with the IT guy, at the time as one of the little one of his little student gnomes he sent me off to go clean the viruses off the computer it had like the bagel worm and stuff like that if anybody remembers those so yes i remember these machines quite fondly now i don't remember what the insides looked like because i don't remember if i ever took them apart but anyways fast forward 20 some odd years later here we are um with one in front of me now and this one looks like it's got some warpage going on. It was definitely baking in the Texas heat. So, doesn't turn on. I have a feeling I know why. It's probably the power supply itself. Now, Dells of this era were weird in the fact that they used proprietary power supplies for a little while. I mean, they have the same ATX Molex, but they're pinned differently. I don't know if this was one of those affected models or not. Um, so we shall find out. Now, how in the hell do we get this thing open? There, there we go. There's one. There we go. There's the other. So, ooh, it's a slot one system. Fairly dusty. Yep, proprietary Dell power supply, so we're not going to get a um, power supply for this one. Um, <laughs> so, we're going to have to take the power supply apart and find out what actually failed in the power supply and see if we can't fix it. So, wow, this thing's a mess. Holy crap. This thing is a mess. So, little on the dust dustacular side nothing out of the ordinary there so all right um i don't see anything alarming nothing that stands out that would cause you know like any blown caps on the motherboard anyways so you know what let me go get a power cord and let's plug it in and see if this actually does anything at all honestly all right, so I got the power cord out. One thing to note is um, this thing is suffering from brittle plastic disease, which I'm not surprised. Just about every single machine that I got out of Computer Reset, and I didn't go myself. I got them third party, whether it was people that went, that sent me things or perhaps from the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Midwest show, stuff like that. Every single thing that I got out of Midwest has just been brittle. Um, or not Midwest, but computer reset. I'm almost afraid to open this up. Yeah, like, look at this. You can see it just... Yeah, that's just bad. Yeah, that's just a new, that That's a problem. I want to glue that in place or something. Uh, okay, um, enough of that. Let's, um... Let's get the power cord in. Hey, it's drawing current. It tried to turn on. It did try. So the power supply is not dead. Um, it actually turned on. Interesting. 
That doesn't necessarily mean it posts, though. That might be our issue. Maybe it doesn't post. No. It just posted. Um, okay. I still want to crack a look, to take a look at that power supply, crack it open, and see what the capacitors look like, though. Oh, that sounds like ass. Dry gears. Come on. Belts. No surprises there. Hey, it opened once. Anyways, um, I think we should get this thing dusted. And I want to take a look inside that power supply and make sure everything's actually kosher. Actually, I changed my mind. This thing is like so disgusting that I'm just going to take this thing all the way apart, all the way apart and clean it out. Kind of like uh, Mike's Tech channel, if anyone's seen that channel. Uh, almost like that. I'm just going to rip all the parts out of here and we're just going to de-dust everything and clean it up. And then we'll take a look at that power supply because right now this thing is just completely plugged up and it's just nasty. You even got like cobwebs in here from sitting in that warehouse for the last 20 years. So the um, chassis got the shower treatment because uh, that thing was just nasty. So I'm in the middle of just letting it Letting all the water run out and letting it dry out. Nasty. So I got all the parts drying off at the current moment in time. Um, I blew this out the best I could, but I can't really do anything until I get it apart. So the next thing I'm going to do, this thing's still full of dust and I want to clean it up. But I want to go ahead and get this thing apart and inspect the circuit board and inspect the health of the capacitors because yeah there's it had a complaint of not turning on even though it turns on now who knows what's going to happen you know later on down the line so yeah i'd rather be safe than sorry because this is most definitely a proprietary power supply for sure so yep all right i got the lid off cut all the zip ties off to the wire and remove the strain relief so i can get this completely out of here but um, it's extremely dirty. No surprises there. But um, outside of that, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. I don't see any bulging capacitors or anything along those lines. Because I think this power supply was actually manufactured just before the plague era. And just before that really became a thing. So, <clears throat> I mean, they're old now. Who knows how long this power supply has been used, but it might actually be okay. But really, the biggest problem is going to be getting all of this crap cleaned up so it can actually breathe properly again. I'm debating whether to wash it and bake dry it or just blow it out. I, I don't know. Um, that would require taking this thing fully apart, which... Seems easier said than done, but yeah, we'll see. I already clipped these two zip ties off for the fan, which goes between here and here. So I should be able to unplug the fan now and then get that out of the way because I don't want to wash the fan. That's a really bad idea. Don't ask me how I know. It's just a bad idea. And then get this board out and bake dry it. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just get it all cleaned up. Just do it right. And there we go. Much better. So I've decided to just wash these boards instead of blowing them off. Um, that way I can just let them dry. I let them heat dry a little bit and then I pulled them out before they were 100% dry so I didn't damage anything. Especially this guy here. Um, I washed this one too. And, it just, and I didn't even really wash it. I just ran it under a little water. And then decided to get it hot to dry a little bit. And now I just got it tipped up so it'll dry the rest of the way out. 
Um, I'm just going to let it sit for a day or so before I do anything additional. But it's got that stupid hydroscopic glue in there too. So that's a pisser, but it is what it is. So that's a standby regulator. Um, Alright, so I'm just going to let this stuff dry off. And we'll be back when all that is done. Also, while these are drying off, a friend of mine just informed me that the LXF series, United Chemicon, Nippon Chemicon, is a known bad series. So, that means I'm going to have to take this apart and replace them anyways. Um, so, okay, well, I mean, if we want to improve the reliability of this thing, we, we need to do that. Um... I do want to check these, though. Are these the same LXF series? Oh, uh, no, they're not. This is the PL series. So, okay. Um, we know at least those have to be changed, so... Alrighty, then. We're going to need to clear that glue out of there anyway. So, really, it's... It's got to come apart. We got to do this the right way. It wouldn't be my channel if we were going to do this the wrong way, right? So, all right. Well, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, it's looking like we're going to need to get a capacitor list together because according to badcaps.net, this series here is also on the known bad list. The PL series of Nichicon. So that's on the known bad list. These LXFs are known on the bad list. Or on the known bad list. Um, I don't know about these here. LXF, yep, same thing. So, all right, yeah, I've got most of these on hand, but I don't have any 3900s because that's not a common value. So, I am definitely going to have to get a list together and we're going to have to get an order in because while I have it apart, we're going to have to make it right. All right, so I tore this thing all the way apart, took the modules off and everything. Make sure that's off. Got these little boards out now. And they sneakily put a cap inside this heat shrink tubing. So you gotta watch out for that. So here we go. Motherboard. This is what we need capacitors wise. If you can read my chicken scratch. That's the diameter. That's the height. And that's the lead spacing. And then the power supply. This is what we have for the power supply. I got the low ESR caps marked where they need to be. And then the same thing over here for three modules. That's the standby power supply, which is right here. And then we got these two modules here. See, this is the controller and feedback that runs the, um, you know, the voltage monitoring and all that stuff. And then this is the controller. Now, I don't know if this does just the PFC boost conversion or if this does both. But that's the controller for the main switching power supply. And then we have a 3501 over there, which I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, it's looking like um, the main MOSFET's right here. And the, yep, that's it. So that's the main MOSFET, which is coupled with this little board. So yes, that's the main switching controller that runs the entire power supply. So we got that. All of that's done. And... Off to the races. Got to get the parts order together. I got to clear it with the original owner for this machine who picked this up. And then we'll get it recapped and then get it done. Alright, so I got all the new caps over here. Well, most of them anyways. I got to go in my stash and grab the ones I already have. But I got most of the caps here that I need that I didn't have. So I'm st starting to pull all the old caps off and... I'm not seeing anything physically leaking, but I didn't expect to because these are from like 98. And with the caps in the late 90s, it's not so much leaking that I worry about. It's that they dry out and they lose their capacity and the ESR goes up over time. And the plague era capacitors are worse in the regard that they go faster, right? So, and it's known that these are these lxf brands are just kind of a known bad thing from uh bad caps but anyways um so we're taking care of that and the other thing is that's driving me nuts is while i got this apart i'm trying to pull all this hydroscopic glue that goes conductive and turns brown after a while and it's ruthless this stuff is just 
It's just hiding everywhere. So trying to get all this off, like this was hiding underneath that. Because I had to get that off in order to get to one of these caps. Yeah, it's just, it's an issue. So even if you have one of these power supplies that's working, you got to get all this glue off in the areas that's critical. Like out here doesn't matter too much, right? It's where the electrical connections are, like here, that need to come off. So, and here. It just, it's just, it has to be done. Oh, also, the only reason why I'm even bothering with this power supply, because if it was just an ordinary ATX power supply, I would have just replaced it, right? The only reason why I'm even bothering with this is the fact is it's proprietary. Could I retrofit another PCB into the old enclosure? Maybe. It's hard to say. Um, it's a smaller form factor, so might be able to do something, might not. I don't know, but it was just easier to recap it and just have it ready to go so that way it'll last the next 20 years. All right, so now we got all of the new capacitors installed on the standby regulator board. All the other ones are in there. All the new ones are in there. The old ones are out here. So at this point, it's about ready to just put all this back together. I got to solder all those boards back in. Get this thing back together, and then we will move on to the motherboard. Now that the power supply is out of the way and put back together, we can finally start to work on the motherboard. Well, it's a good thing I pulled these, because look, they're leaking. Yeah, they're they're bad. You can see it here. Yep. There, there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean this board up for sure, cause um, they're definitely leaking. Yep. Well, it's a good thing I pulled those. Oh, you can see it. The spot there. Yeah. They're leaking. So yeah, unlike the power supply, these are actually leaking. All right. All the new caps are installed now. Got the surface mount one in there. The two new there and the rest of them here. So the only thing left to do with this board at this point is the christening, which is going to be replacing this battery because it's deader than 6 a.m. on a Sunday. So we're gonna put the new one in there and it is replaced. So, garbage. All right, so now it's time to put the machine together. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the floppy drive and the CD-ROM drive, clean it up, you know, check the belt, the laser, you know, all the typical one of the mill stuff. And then that is it. But for now, let's get this board out of the way and let's start looking at the disk drives. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to take this CD-ROM drive apart and check it out because here's the thing. That is not normal. It's not supposed to make that noise. That's pretty bad. So we need to get this apart and we need to find out what is going on with that. Plus, I want to clean the laser lens and do the basic service on these anyways. So, all right, it appears to be XM Toshiba, I think. Um... So that looks like it's slightly off there compared to here. But anyways, it's probably not that big of a deal. So let's um, get you apart and take a look at what we got going on inside here because that gear should not be that noisy. At least I don't remember these drives being that noisy when I was younger. Granted, it's been 20 years, so who knows, but... Yeah, I just don't remember him being that loud before, so I don't think that's right. So at least now the capacitors are out of the way, so I can take a look at the little stuff like this. Yep, Toshiba. June 1998. Uh, what was I doing in June of 98? Honestly, I don't remember. It was May of 98 when we had the uh, memorial day like 12 30 in the morning memorial day we had a tornado warning sirens were going off power went out it was kind of crazy i remember that it was yeah it was definitely in 98 because 
June of 98, I just got out of sixth grade. Yes, sixth grade. I was on my way into seventh grade. Yep, I remember. It's been a long time ago. Anyways, all right, so now I need, I need both hands. All right, after a little bit of fiddling, and this was kind of stuck, I got this thing apart. I got the tray out. There's a clip at the top on this tray that releases it, which is right here. That's out. It's definitely dusty as hell. So with the tray out, it still has that ungodly noise and it likes to get stuck. I have a bad feeling about that. And uh, God, I don't want to be right, but I guarantee I'm right. I guarantee the um, uh, the gear is cracked. How much you want to bet? Because that is a hallmark of a cracked gear. Alright, that's out. Let's see. Yep, knew it. Right here. See that split? Right there. That, my friends, is a problem. That's actually a big problem. So, I don't know how I'm going to fix that yet. Um, if I even can. That's going to be a very um, interesting proposition. But, beside that point, let's see. The laser lens, it's a little bit dirty, but not really. A little bit of alcohol and a Q-tip will fix that right up. I'm not worried about that. So what I'm doing now is I'm feeling the sled, making sure there's no cracked gear on the sled. So, yes, we got a problem with this. Yeah, it's just barely on there. Yep, there it is. Jeez, crackery deckery right there yep well we're gonna have to figure out how to fix that i'm not entirely certain the method of attack on that just yet i think well i mean i could 3d print one if i knew how but i don't have a 3d printer nor do i have the skills to make that so unfortunately we're gonna have to rig this up and i think the way to do that is to just glue it and squeeze it with a clampy thingy. So I think that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that at this moment in time. Um, so it's going to have to go on the back burner. Because the eject gear is broken. Super glue didn't hold. The um, MEK stuff that I typically use. It's a different kind of plastic. It's like a nylon or something. Which this doesn't work on. So unfortunately... I can't do anything with that drive, so it's going to have to get set aside. I'll play with it later to see if it even reads, but if not, then it's going to go bye-bye and we're going to have to put another drive in it. But for now, I want to start getting that computer put back together and I want to get it fired up and see if it actually works. Alright, so we're back together, loosely. Um, got the screws all back in it and, well, it's now or never. It's either going to work or it's going to go bang. Turned on and shut off. Oh, there we go. Fans are running. Does it work? going to be a really good question. Oh, yep, it does. I heard a double beep. Yay! Okay. Power down. Let's just unplug the power out of the bag. So, it is functional. Hard, or the, we don't know about the hard drive yet, but the power supply fired up, motherboard fired up, and I got a post. Perfect. So we are well on our way to a working machine. Now I gotta have another CD-ROM drive, but eh, is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. 
So let's see, you have to go in here like such. I forget how the world these things work. This is a very interesting and weird design. Pretty sure it's got to go like There we go. <laughs> Need me a dumb. All right, so put the hard drive back in here. I know I'm being brave because we have no idea if this drive actually works. It's gonna be an interesting one. So let's see. Floppy. Um. Let's see here. That's right. So you go here. I think. Yes. You go there. And then you get plugged into the primary IDE1. Which is the primary. With think it went like that it could have went like hold on you know what because the issue is so you have to go here that doesn't make sense because if I go here that also doesn't make sense looks like it was folded this way yeah that makes sense all right I'll deal with you later um, hard drive connector go for power goes here. All right, perfect. Okay, do we have hard drive activity? We do. Yep. We're functional. Got a functional IDE controller and a functional drive. So, awesome. Now I gotta go dig through my spares. Actually, before I do that, before I go run off the rails here for a second, I wanna plug this stupid, um, broken eject geared CD-ROM in here. Cause I wanna see I mean, it's working. I guess at this point, I need to go see if it will read a CD. Do I even have one up here? Um, no, I do not. Actually, I do. I have this crappy music CDR that's seen better days. Let's see, does it work? Hmm. Nope. Being struggling. I can tell by the servo. It is struggling. Um, I mean, look at it, but I've had a lot of issues with CDRs that, you know, have been through hell. Now, these were, I burnt when I was a kid. I probably burnt these when this machine was new. Just, just saying. Ugh. Let's see.
That one reads. No, it's a losing lock. Yeah, that drive is toast. I mean, so are the discs, but I keep these two around because this kind of tells me how good a shape the CD-ROM drive is because I've had really good CD-ROM drives that will read this. The data layer only comes out to here, but it will read that. So, the fact that it doesn't means this drive is weak. Now, I'm going to have to get a boot disc, or not a boot disc, but a... Um, a, a seed, an actual CD and see if it'll read it. So one minute. Now this drive is new enough to read CDRs. I know that for a fact. Here's a nice clean CDR. So here we go. Oh yeah. Picked it right up. Okay. So it is working. This drive should do it. Um, the original owner of this machine might actually put a CD burner or a DVD CDRW or something like that in there anyways. But for now, I'm, since this is original to the machine, I'm just going to leave it. It even has a Dell part number. So it is reading the disc. So we're golden there. So I'm going to put that back together. Then we're going to work on the floppy drive because we've got to do something with the eject button because the plastic is broken. All right, so the floppy drive has been serviced. I glued the stakes back into the plastic, so there it's not going anywhere. It's it's perfectly fine for now. The likelihood the floppy drive will get used a lot is very, very, very low, but it's glued together, and if it doesn't hold, then the next best thing would either epoxy it or take a piece of VHB and stick it in there, clamp it or something like that, but... ABS plus anytime they do these blends that plus crap it gets extremely brittle so anyways we're back together now so I can just slide you back in here or at least attempt to slide this guy back in here which is really a uh... hmm there we go There we go. It's in there. All right. It's a weird contraption because the button pushes on this. When it really needs to push on this. But anyways, that's uh, I'm going to leave that alone. The other thing I'm doing right now is, and it's going to take a good 24 hours to cure, is I've glued this piece back on. It's not perfect. I don't expect this thing to hold because this plastic is extremely brittle. And this is just, all this is really, is the card support that holds the cards, the ISA cards or whatever, you know, for long, long boards, which is not, is not a thing anymore these days. So the likelihood of putting a super long ISA card in here is probably next to none. So really, I'm just going to leave that alone. Um... The only thing we need now is we need the video memory expansion to really gain performance out of this thing. But, however, um, that's it. So, we need to get this thing hooked up and we need to see if this thing actually works post set the clock and all of the good stuff to make it qualify for a December video. Alright, so here we go. We're going to plug our power cable into the cable hole all right whoop monitor lit up let's see what we got here peekaboo alert cover was old no crap yeah we know all right let's see what we get going on over here invalid configuration that's to be expected Alrighty then, what is it? It is 833.2 gigabytes. Ooh. It is what? 
842 on let's see 842 oh wait 42 it is October let's see October the 21st Two thousand and twenty-three. Wow, time flies. All right, so there we go. Um, Disket drive. All of that's good. Let's see. Keyboard errors report. Mm -hmm. P. Intrusion detection. Oh, let me do this. Disabled. I don't care. All right. Whoops. Ooh, it's loading some kind of Windows 2000 style OS. Maybe. All right. Well, I will be back when this gets done. It may have frozen. I don't know. Alright, so the OS install on that hard drive is borked, so I burnt a um, ultimate boot CD from archive.org, some random one. Um, I used to have one years ago, but I don't remember which exact one it was, but this is the one I found on archive.org that will actually fit on a CDR. And not a DVD-R, because all the ones on there only fit on a DVD-R. And, uh, yes. So. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're low on virtual memory. Really? Uh, yeah. We know. Oh, this thing probably needs a ton of RAM. There's only 128 megs or 192 megs or something in that system. So... Yeah. Whoa. This thing's got a ton of crap on it. Jeez. But it's running. Um. Okay. I like that we've got a pile of different pieces of software on here. Uh, okay. So, I think I know what I gotta do. Um. I've got to image the... Does it, did it detect the hard drive? It did. Yes, it did detect the hard drive. So we're going to have to image the drive. Okay. Alright, well, we'll do that. We'll, we'll go through the drive and see if it's worth imaging any software or anything on it. And If not, we'll skip past all of that and then we'll reload the OS. But a Pentium 2, 266 with 128 RAM is running Windows XP. Oh, man. That's kind of, yeah. I ran the um, CPU Z tool and uh, it froze. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that's a cool little version of the Ultimate Boot CD. I got this from archive.org. I had to increase the amount of RAM. Because it only had, a, like, what, 192 megs? I had to put 384 in there at least. My 256 sticks are bad. So, yeah, that was an issue. So that, that, that couldn't... Anyway, so that's done. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is... The hard drive had nothing spectacular on it, so I'm just going to wipe it. Um, I got this out so I can copy files and stuff across the USB, which... I don't need that plugged in right now, so I'm going to unplug you. Um, really, the only thing left is to reboot this thing and reformat the hard drive. So, let's fire this guy up in a DOS. And um, get this thing formatted. So, I'm taking the untraditional approach here because everyone else uses 
um, F disk and scan disk and all that, but I am using Partition Magic 7, which is part of the Norton System Works 2003 disk that I've had for many, many, many years. So I'm doing a partition creation and I'm doing a bad sector test at the same time, and we will determine if um, we have any bad sectors with the given drive that is actually in here. 3 gigabyte. I remember I had a 2.1 gigabyte drive in the CTX, which died like three times under warranty. And this is made in that same era. So I figured I might as well um, just let it roll. Awesome. All operations completed successfully. So, let's see, status. We need to set this active or it will not boot. Bingo. We're good. So let's get this thing done. Well, I guess technically this qualifies as DOS. I'm working in DOS right now. But I think I just spontaneously decided that I want to make this a Windows 2000 machine. I don't know why I want to endure such pain, but I think I want to. Because Windows 2000 is a decent OS. Windows XP, although it will run on this thing, is a bit heavy for a 266. Windows 2000 might be okay with it. We'll have to see. Alright, now that we're running some semblance of an operating system, we need to see if this floppy drive actually still works. So, let's see. Move you out of the way. Let's... It does. It absolutely does. Let's create a new folder. Yay. New text document. <clears throat> we'll save that. Yep. Everything's fine there. Yeah, we're good. there we go so I think we're gonna be okay we know the CD-ROM drive works even though it needs a gear um, the original owner is gonna have to go online and because apparently this is a Toshiba drive and apparently the the gears are a known problem with these drives from the information that I have so to the point where there's actual 3d printed gears being made for those so I'll let him do that if he wants to keep that drive, assuming he doesn't want to replace it with like a CD burner or DVD or whatever that's on him. Um, but I think, in my opinion, he should max this thing out. He should get the extended V memory, uh, 400 megahertz CPU. Actually, I think it goes higher than that. It's got bad sectors on that disc. Not surprised. This is just a random disc. So you should upgrade that, get some memory, max out the memory, and really make this thing a good machine, in my opinion. So we'll let that bad disc finish off, and then I think we're going to put this thing back together. The other reason why I throw a random disc in there, whether it's bad or good, is because when I do a format, what the format operation actually does, or any write operation for that matter, is it will demagnetize the heads that are on the drive. So, that disc is bad. Now, I'm going to hit that disc with a bulk tape eraser just to make sure that the disc is actually bad before I throw it away. Um, so, yes, it's formatting the disc and it gets to a certain point and stops and it goes to a certain point and stops. So, we'll have to hit that with a bulk tape eraser and see if that solves our problem. But, um, this is a good way to exercise the drive anyways. So we had 7K in bad sector, so I pulled the disc out and I hit it with a bulk tape eraser. So let's see how many bad sectors it has now. This will tell me if there's actually physical media damage. Let's see, what do we have? 
None. No bad sectors. And it's the same disc. I just hit it with a bulk tape eraser. And there's a little bit of media scratching, but nothing. At the very beginning there, there is a little, but it's not enough to interfere. So, yeah, I can successfully reuse that disc. So, just stray magnetism and stuff like that. Or if it was formatted with a misaligned drive previously, there could be, yeah. Now, this disc was readable in this drive before I formatted it, as you saw. So, I know the drive's not out of alignment. And if it is, it's just barely out of alignment. So, no, we're not going to format another. We're going to kill this and get out of it. So there we go. That's it for this machine, I think. Um, we've got a basic install of an operating system and all of that fun stuff. Um, I'm not going to know what the gaming performance is like on this machine or if I'm going to run benchmarks or anything like that because I don't really have any of that software handy, unlike a lot of YouTube channels. Um, but... The point of this video was to actually get this machine fixed and running, and we have successfully performed such action. So, the only thing left to do now is finish cleaning up the rest of the little bits of dust and stuff like that, which I think I got most of that out already, and um, move on to the next one. And there we go, it's all back together. check hear that thing start up so I guess we can um, peel that off which actually I might leave that on there I'll let him peel that off. Windows 2000 it does take a little bit of time to start up, but it always has, as far as I remember it. She's running now. You can hear it banging off the virtual memory a little bit. Noise in there coming from that Mac store hard drive. So here we go. I got this. I got the OS set to auto log in. Um, not a big deal. You can go in there and change it or whatever. But that's what I got it set. So everything is functioning perfectly fine. Um... It does have all of the drivers. I don't think DirectX is installed. Um, Service Pack 4, all that fun stuff. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, it does have DirectX installed. Pentium 2 MMX 266 megahertz. No SSE 2 here, ladies and gentlemen. No SSE 1, no... No AVX, none of those things. We don't need any of that. Test Direct 3D. Yep, Direct 3D rendering is working perfectly fine. So, alrighty then. Um, oh dang, it's actually working really well. Alright, so anyways, um, this thing's all ready to go. Um, it's going to go back to its original owner, so... If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. Until next time, guys.